If you're applying to law school next cycle, I have a suggestion for you that might sound somewhat radical. It's that you not bother studying logic games at all. Here's why. The June 2024 LSAT will be your last opportunity to take the LSAT with the logic games section. Starting with the August LSAT, logic games will be removed and replaced with a second scored logical reasoning section. What this means is that if the June LSAT is your first attempt and you want to retake it, you'll be retaking a version of the test without logic games on it at all. So any work you will have invested in logic games will be wasted and you would have been better off devoting that time to logical reasoning since the new LSAT will have two scored logical reasoning sections, one scored reading comp and no games. Of course, it's possible that you could be one and done with the June LSAT or maybe you wanna take the LSAT in April and then retake it in June. However, few students end up taking that approach in practice in part because there's not a whole lot of urgency when you're studying for the LSAT in the spring, knowing that you have retakes available in June, August, September, and beyond, of course. Of course, you could have some self-imposed urgency knowing that the June LSAT will be your last chance with the games. But here's the thing, life comes up, other more pressing obligations come up. There could be tech issues or proctoring issues that necessitate a retake after the June LSAT, at which point, of course, your games studying will be for naught. There will be no benefit to it, or little benefit at least, since Logic Games has little relationship with the other sections of the exam. So I recommend that you either say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to go hard on the LSAT for February, April, maybe June as a last ditch effort if you want to take the LSAT with the games, or alternatively, you focus all your efforts on the August 2024 LSAT with two scored reasoning sections, one scored reading comp section, knowing that, of course, you could also retake the LSAT other dates that fall. Here's some frameworks to help you decide whether you want to take the LSAT with the game section or without the game section. Of course, non-native English speakers tend to do relatively better on games. Same goes for those who majored in STEM, in part because logic games don't have the same perceived ambiguities of language that logical reasoning and reading comprehension have. Maybe they're a little bit more seemingly clear cut. You don't have all the vocabulary issues that you might have in reasoning and reading comp. Now you may be wondering, of course, who should opt for the LSAT without the game section. I'll get to that in just a minute, since of course you want to make as informed a decision as possible. But before I do, I just wanted to reintroduce myself and share a little bit about LSAT Unplugged. My name is Steve Schwartz. I founded LSAT Unplugged. We have a variety of ways we can support you in getting the highest LSAT score possible, getting into a T14, getting a full ride to law school or significant scholarship money, maybe both. We have live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. So who should take the LSAT without the game section? Typically, those who majored in the humanities, those who don't like math, tend to have a harder time on games and tend to do relatively better on reasoning and reading comp. You could, of course, take a version of the LSAT with the game section or take a couple of sections, no games, just the two reasonings and one reading comp and see how you do on each. Maybe you'll do better with the games. Maybe you'll do better without the games. However, it's also worth considering that Many students struggle with games a lot at first, but it ends up becoming their best section. That was certainly the case for me. I struggled a great deal at first. I was never a math person. Humanities was always more of my strong suit. I majored in political science, and games gave me a lot of trouble. But I ended up getting consistently perfect logic game sections because the patterns there were a lot more obvious to me than in reasoning and reading comp where they're a bit more subtle. So you may want to devote a couple of weeks at least to studying games to see if you can improve significantly on them before making this decision whether to go hard for the LSAT over the next few months or whether you want to focus more on reasoning and reading comp and aim to take the LSAT in August of next year, several months away. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please share it with someone who needs to see it. Maybe you know someone who's debating whether to take the LSAT with the game section or without the game section and this video can make the difference for them in helping them figure it out. And by the way, if you haven't already, get a copy of my book, Mastering the LSAT, available at lsatmasterybook.com. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.